Hi, I'm Connor Sullivan, and this is the Brett Beard Show. With me today, Brett Beard. How you doing, Coach? I'm good. How about yourself? I'm doing good. All right, uh, so last week we had the scrimmage versus Woodlawn. Uh, for, I just want to get started with the summer season first. Just tell me about uh, some players who stood out over the summer, and just names to expect to hear a lot this year. Yeah, you know, I think more importantly uh, than just names, you, you know, we 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 got the normal off season in. You know, with what uh, what we're going through, what this world's going through, I think for us to finally have normalcy. Uh, throughout the winter in the weight room to the second quarter phase where we, we had the sports specific conditioning going into spring football, being able to have a spring football and really seeing more of, of who we had in the program and what they could do. Uh, and then going into that third quarter where we, uh, we just wrapped up, you know, with the, uh, the summer phase, um, really an unbelievable buy-in. I mean, our guys, you know, all summer long, uh, Monday through Thursday, every morning, you, you know, they came in, they fought the conditions, they worked to improve and hone in on their craft and, uh, you know, just got bigger and faster and stronger. And I, and I think ultimately to build this program, the foundation of it is the off season because you do, you know, you find that commitment to the game of football because the game of football, you really train 355 days to play 10. Uh, you know, and that, that takes a special person to play this game. And uh, for you guys to, to, to continue to grow and, uh, come together throughout the, 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 the summer workouts, being able to have our senior getaway and really tie everything together to what we want to make, you know, what we want to create in Dental Springs football uh, was a huge success. It's awesome to hear just from a like senior football player standpoint, I've seen like a lot of growth just like, like us becoming like more of a family, the bond, stuff like that, especially with that senior retreat. It's like, See big changes in the team. Yeah, you can definitely feel it. And uh, not just can you feel it, you can see it. I mean, just the way you play together, the way you, you, you hold each other accountable, the way you press, uh, the way you work together, you, you know, they're, you have a great understanding of time for play, time for work. And, uh, you, you know, it starts at the top with, the, with you older guys in a program, and it's going to trickle on down. And, you know, you talk about leaving a legacy. The legacy isn't just left on the field. It's left in a program to where when those juniors roll up, they reflect you. And then when the sophomores roll up to being juniors and to seniors, they also reflect you because you put your stamp on a program and you left a legacy behind. Uh, on that topic, just like, what's like the attitude going into this year just different than previous years and stuff well, like that? Well, you know, one of the big things we're talking to is you know, we, want, we want to have that chip on our shoulder. I mean, we want to play with a, a, a little different mindset and different mentality. I mean, we want to solve a lot of our issues with aggression and uh, get this program flipped back to where it once was. Uh, the mentality, uh, you know, it seems very, uh, you know, blue collar. You, you're not scared to work. You're not scared to get after it. And uh, of course, when you, when you take that on, you just become a, just a much more fun group to be around. Uh, practice is fun, uh, no matter the conditions, no matter how tough. And that's what, uh, you know, that's what makes this game so much fun to watch you guys grow together and you take ownership in the program. And uh, you know, from there, that's gonna that's gonna lead to the success. That, that we're going to have on the field because we're having success in the locker room, in the field house, and the behind the scenes. Speaking on that, uh, just <clears throat> growth with the team. What are some areas of growth over the summer that have like made some big changes from previous years, or just, like different players that have stepped up, stuff like that? Well, I mean, the biggest thing, you know, the summer workouts, you really find out the level of commitment each and every individual in the program has. Uh, you can't you can't survive in a, in a team sport without commitment uh, and sacrifice. Uh, you know, and that's, that's two big things that I've seen uh, in this program that's grown greatly. And not only do you have it, but you embrace it. Like you're okay to sacrifice for your teammates. You're okay to commit to your teammates to a level that's yet to be done. And that's been the biggest thing that I've seen. And you see it through uh, the tempo of practice. Uh, you know, you, you see it through the attitude in practice, which ultimately will carry over into the game setting where you're going to be comfortable. Yes, sir. So let's talk about like different position battles, position changes, like a lot of new faces. You got Jabari Fortenberry at free safety. That's you know, position change. You got lots of young guys and different guys rotating that D line. Tell us about some of those changes. Yeah, you, you know, Fortenberry's been a huge addition coming off the basketball team. Uh, you know, what I love about a guy like that, he's so athletic. He's raw, but he's athletic. And I, and I think he's going to be athletic enough to put pressure uh, either on the guy that's in front of him on the depth chart, ultimately taking his job or it's going to make him better. But he's also athletic enough to come in and, and really get comfortable to compete against any and everybody that we'll see across the field from us because he's so athletic. Uh, but what a great addition he's been. Um, 
you know, our outside linebacker play, you, you know, if, if you had to look back on last year and we, we had some struggles, those guys have, have made tremendous strides throughout this past year. And you're starting to see it in their play. And then a guy like Eli DiGirolamo, a young buck that's been thrust into that position, has really flourished this preseason. And uh, his game has taken off and been a lot of fun to watch. And, you know, sometimes you get to the point where, you, you know, it's not so much that you win the job or, you you know, you get that much better than the guy in front of you. You just make it to where coaches have to play you. Like, and you, you if everybody would just make it easy for us to say that guy's got to play, well, this, this, this job would be a lot easier. Mm-hmm. But there are competition battles. Um, you, you know, D-line with the addition of Alex Chandler full-time. You saw a little bit of him late last year. He's a guy that wreaks havoc. He's got to get a little better with his body control and finishing plays. But he's a guy that is uh, that's high motor. That's going to disrupt the timing of a lot of uh, a lot of offenses. And, uh, and you know, I'm excited to see where he ends up at the end of this year. Um, you know, you move Zach B- uh, McCabe over from O line to a nose guard. That's you know six four two seventy five, and and he's just in two days, three days, has picked up how to play nose guard, which is going to give us the versatility to add some. Some beef across the front, uh, across the front. When you put him at nose, and you could bump Dylan Watson out for saying Alex Chandler to go with uh, Porter Gibson against some run-heavy teams. You know, you got some meat right there. So they they really have uh, they've really grown up a lot, and I, I'm excited to watch them to continue to grow. I don't need you peaking now. I need you peaking in about five, six, seven weeks, and then just honing in on being the best we could possibly be. Yes, sir. The competition's making. Team a lot better. Yep. All right, coach, let's get into the highlights of the scrimmage versus Woodlawn. We got Brett Beard taking the field with the Yellow Jackets. First time for the scrimmage. You got the Dental Spring student section. You know, excited to be back. All right, uh, let's see. You got the Woodlawn ball. Screen pass to William Jackson. Run down the field. Everyone rounding up. You got 45, Brian Hawkins, cornerback, in on the tackle. And then now with the game, we're going to start the live two quarters. You got Ricky Collins, deep pass. Downfield, you got sophomore Mason Reese in on the interception. You got him running downfield. You got uh, Woodlawn's running back in on the tackle. Just uh, explain that play for us. I mean, it's just a big time player. Uh, Mason Reese has, has grown up a lot. You know, had an opportunity to make a pick right there. You pick off the big time quarterback, and uh, you know, you love to see him uh, get those instincts and, and go complete the run. Yes, sir. I right, they got Reese Mooney rolling left. He pass to uh, Micah Harrison, complete. And then uh, next play, Denham will go on for a field goal. Caleb LeBlanc on the attempt. Off the crossbar, it's good. Jackets take a 3-0 lead. Got the PAT, Will on ball now. You got Collins under pressure, rolling out the pocket, uh, dodging defenders, and you got fan favorite number six, Connor Sullivan and Alex Chandler in on the sack. You got him excited. Fan favorite 100%. Oh yeah. Uh, you got Jags ball, Reese Mooney, the snap is actually high and fumble. That would be recovered by Woodland. That's a game changer right there. Just tell us yeah, about our, our, our turnovers are uh, such critical times, and that's what kills your momentum and, and, and kills your drives. Speaking of momentum changes, uh, you got next play, you got Collins rolling right, throws a pass deep down. It's actually intercepted by uh, cornerback Mason Edwards. It's a huge play right there, talking about you know momentum changes. Tell us about that. Well, you just love to see us, our defense, get our back against the wall and answer up. That's something we didn't see a whole lot last year. You know, last year it was, oh gosh, what's going to happen now? Or this year, I mean, these boys stepping up, making plays and with our back against the wall. That that tells you growth right there. Yes, yeah, sir. We got two studs at cornerback, Mason Edwards and Mason Verice. Jackets ball now. You got Mooney dropping back, rolling out, deep pass to sideline pass to Andrew Goodwin, keeping the feet in. That's a great throw, great catch right there. And then Jackets would uh, end up being third down again. Mooney throwing a deep pass downfield in the end zone, right through the hands of receiver Cameron Irish. Jackets would go on for a field goal, that'd be no good. Second half now, Jackets ball. Hand off to Ray McNeely for a nice gain. Jackets moving deep in Woodlawn territory. M- uh, Mooney actually fumbles the snap. That would be recovered by Woodlawn. That's two turnovers now. Just Explain that. They're just critical turnovers, and, and it's such an elementary part of the game. Those things cannot happen. Yeah, it's a big momentum change now. So we got Woodlawn would eventually. All right, Woodlawn ball now. Collins is third down, deep pass to the sideline, sideline to uh, Clayton Adams for a first down. All right, Woodlawn inside the five. 
You got handoff to running back. William Jackson, he's punching in for the touchdown there, feeding off that momentum from the fumble. They come back, answer. Willon will take a 7-3 lead now. So, all right, now you got Mooney back to pass. And stepping up in the pocket, throwing it deep downfield. And then Woodlawn, number eight, Desiree Delmore with the interception. Rolling downfield, you got Jackets, you got Ray McNeely in on the tackle. That's a big return right there. Now the Jackets defense will end up going to get a stop, and the offense gets one more chance to come back and win the game. So you got Mooney rolling out, and he throw, throws the ball away out the end zone, and uh, the ball goes out of bounds. Well, the officials actually called that for intentional grounding, so that would result in a safety. That's just a bummer right there. And then final score would be nine to three, Woodlawn wins. Off that, let's just talk about like, the defensive play, you know, yep. you had three interceptions, you had a lot of sacks, a fumble recovery, ugh, fumble recovery. Just tell us some important plays, standout players that. Well, I mean, uh, you know, once again, the biggest thing, for one, you saw that we were making plays. Mm -hmm. you, you know, we had a chance to make big plays and we capitalized. Sometimes we let that get away from us in the past, uh, to where you, you see the growth. Uh, once again, I mentioned earlier, I mean, you have the big turnover right there, where you botch the snap going into score, to where it can become a two-play ball game. And, uh, you know, you get a stop. I mean, we, we get a pick. Or, or it was after the, uh, the first uh, botch snap, you, you know, down in our territory. We turn around and we get a pick. I mean, there, there's little things like that uh, to where it has me really excited. I mean, I, just, to see, just to see us compete where we're down, you know. Uh, great teams can handle the ups and downs. You know, you just can't let it get too far up and down. And that's one thing I noticed last night that I really liked was some of the even kill, the attitude and demeanor that we kept. And uh, with that, I mean, you're only going to have the opportunity to get better, to continue to grow. Uh, you know, defensively, you, you know, you talk about, you know, big plays. I mean, the, the, the pick by Mason Edwards right after the turnover was as good a play as anything. So it really uh, just keeps the you know, sideline active and just yep. makes you feel like you're still in the game. Absolutely. And speaking on those turnovers, you had uh, two fumbles, you had an interception, two in the red zone. Just explain that and just how that affects the game. Well, yeah, I mean, you just momentum swings. I mean, you know, you, you, if you give up the momentum, you got to be able to get it back. You know, if there, if there isn't the chaos there, you got to be able to create it for your, for your advantage. Uh, you know, all in all, I thought it was a pretty clean scrimmage. Um, for the most part. Now, both sides had some turnovers. I mean, uh, you know, which, you, you know, it's early. You're, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to put the ball on the ground. You're going you're gonna to overthrow receivers. But for the most part, I thought it was a really clean, physical scrimmage, uh, which is what I wanted to see out of it, to be on the field with those guys. Um, you know, you just clean up the turnovers, and I mean, that was two really good 5A football teams getting after each other. So, talking about the end of the game, so, you uh, have Reese Mooney called for the intentional ground, which would result in a safety, but the Jackets defense would actually had about two minutes left, and they had a chance to stop Woodlawn. They got him to fourth and two, and uh, you almost get the offensive chance to like, march on to win, but you get the offsides, and they get the first down. Yep. That's game. Just Well, I mean, you can't give. you, you got to make everybody earn it. I mean, you can't give them anything. You can't give anybody anything. Uh, you know, and... Uh, when you talk about ball key, I mean, that's a part of discipline that comes with it. you got to know your situation. I mean, I think just about everybody in the stadium last night knew there was a good chance of a freeze call. Uh, you know, just to try to get a free five yards and a free first down, and, you know, we fell victim to it. All right, so let's start uh, looking ahead just towards the season. So after everything that's happened with, like, the team and all the criticism, and how would you say the teams, like, handled, like, the criticism and handled themselves? Uh, you know, I love the fact that uh, really early, no matter who you are or where you go or if you're a parent that's had a kid that's come through a program or a parent that's had a, you know, kid quit and, you know, everybody's got an opinion. I think we all know that and, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that appreciate some people's opinions. I do not. Uh, I care about the fact that our guys are willing to come to work every day, stay committed, sacrifice and uh, hone in on their craft and work to be better than they were the day before. And, uh, it, you know, it's a lot of fun to watch the growth that you have from the, the, the man, the boy that you are when you come into the ninth grade as you go through the program and you see the stages of the young man 
and understanding some of the man qualities you're going to have to have in life to be successful on into that, that man that, that graduates from high school that went through the football program. Uh, you know, ultimately, that's the most important thing to me is as an extension of a, of a parent and, a, and you try to be a role model for these men, for these young men to give them the best opportunity to be successful in their life after football. You know, the naysayers and the, the people with their own opinions probably just don't know. And uh, the fact that I wanted to go out in our scrimmage and kind of silence some of that, you know, by our play and by our attitude and by the uh, just really showing our growth, I, I thought we accomplished that that night in the scrimmage. I was really pleased. You know, if you're looking to go out and win 40 to nothing, that's just unrealistic. This is part of the process of the growth of the program. And, you know, sometimes you got to win the little battles to win the big battle or the little battles to win the war. And um, one of my big goals going into it, as you know, was to uh, silence some of these wannabe supporters or these, you know, this, this fake support and just give them something to talk about in the positive of our football program and be excited to come back out next week. And I really feel like if, if you're a football guy or a football person, you saw that. And uh, that's what's exciting. I, I think our guys, our high school kids are fighting and, and, and loving the pressures of the game and they're beginning to execute in uh, those pressure moments. And that's what makes this really a lot of fun to see the growth from year one to year two. So going off the growth and just talking about like the players fighting and everything, just how's the energy and the culture, the locker room, like how's that been or how's it changed at all? No, I mean, it, it's just the, the energy is so much better. The willingness to hold each other accountable, take ownership uh, is there. And that's what makes the program growth go a lot faster. Uh, I love our attitude. I love, like I said, you know, with the attitude, it's easy to come out and bring the effort every day. You know, when you start loving each other and you start truly caring about each other in the brotherhood, that's where the, the camaraderie, the love, and, the, and, and all the emotions that come with this game, they all kind of collide together in that locker room. And that's what's a lot of fun for you guys to make those memories. And uh, you're going to you're protect that brotherhood. And I think that's what we're getting. I think, I think to be a Denham Springs football player, it means a lot more. It's going to mean a lot more. And uh, it's going to be a special fraternity to join and be a part of. That's one thing uh, I love being in the locker room. It's like a second home. Just like, and even like with new guys, you got people leaving, people coming. It's like, like Jabari coming from basketball. You got Noah coming mm -hmm. from soccer. It's just like it's not like we don't look at them any different. Like we treat them as family, and it's like it's like a really close bond that we have. And well, there's a, there's a mutual respect for for athletes that that compete. And I mean, it doesn't matter if it is football, basketball, soccer, baseball. I think we all know to be uh, successful, we got to compete at a very high level. So all the additions we've had, I mean, if you look at all those guys that, that we've added to this program, it's really kind of given us that, that tipping point for the better. I mean, they've, they've come in, they've embraced our core values, they've embraced the brotherhood aspect of a, of a big time team game, a physical team game. And uh, I couldn't be more proud of, of, of you guys that were already there taking them in, and then I couldn't be more proud of those guys coming in and buying in too. And uh, you, you know, it's, it's gonna take young men like yourselves to, uh, to turn this program in the direction we're going. Yes, sir. So uh, what's like some of the biggest difference from just like the past years at Denham to this year? Like, what's... I, I, I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna throw a word out here. May upset a few people or whatnot, but you know, I, think, I think this group is tough. We can just leave it at that. I think this group is tough. Yeah. So what's going to be the difference this year for you know, us to like, win some big games, play you know, some pretty good teams? Well, I mean, you know, the biggest thing is we've talked about is you know, we're not going to go out to just compete. Competing is a standard that's it's the only option. We go out to win. Getting closer is a, is a great compliment. Thank you. But if we get closer but never get any closer, are we any better? We've got to find those dudes that are willing to fight and give everything for Denham Springs and this football program that's going to take that closer and push us to the line and then ultimately over the line. And uh, it's going to come with, with uh, success. I mean, I think you, when you begin to, to have success uh, and you get, you, you get the, the belief system, because I think you all want to win, you all believe you can win, but do you really believe it if you've never experienced it or experienced it once or twice the last two years? Um, I honestly believe 
you're going to win and you're going to win a lot. I think you're going to be a very successful program. I just need you to go out and play that way and execute that way and act that way uh, because winners win and that's, that's what you do. And uh, for you to be as committed to this program and to this game as, as you are as a collective group and you continue to grow as young men, success is coming. And we just got to go out and we got to really hone in on doing our job and embrace the fact that it's about you individually doing your job for the 11 on the field at that time and the other 90 on the sideline. Yes, sir. So uh, let's talk about the Jamboree versus Walker coming up this Friday. Just, uh, you know, Walker, of course, they're in our district. It's a, it's a big time rivalry. Yeah. Denim and Walker just, what about that? Well, I mean, let's, uh, you know, you don't want a state championship in August. You know, is it part of the process? Absolutely, but you don't win a state championship in August. And what we do in a jamboree against an intense rivalry situation is not going to affect the, the outcome of, of week seven. Mm -hmm. uh, we do it because it's, a, it's an easy travel. We do it because it's, uh, it's going to be a great, a, a great turnout with a rivalry game. It's going to be an intense setting. And, uh, you, you know, I, I couldn't be more excited about how our preseason is lined up. You, you know, you just played Woodlawn, who's got some four- and five-star dudes and arguably some of the best players we may see all year. So you see them in your first scrimmage. Then I put you into an environment of the intense rivalry and the jamboree. We've seen everything we need to see to where week one and on, we should be comfortable being uncomfortable because I've already put you in the most uncomfortable situation by playing against four and five star dudes and then playing an intense rivalry that's the Livingston Parish football. So I, I believe no matter the outcome of either one of those games, it's being in that situation, it's being in that situation when you're back against the wall and it's feeling the, you know, the energy and the intensity of the game to prepare you for what's to come in week one all the way down to uh, you know the dome. Yes, sir. So, so just like, what's your overall expectations for uh, this season? Just from what you've seen over the summer and from the scrimmage. Uh, growth and win. Continued growth. Continued discipline. Uh, continued toughness and uh, doing our job and, and giving us a chance to win. Yes, sir. Well, uh, that's all I got for you today, Coach. So, thank you for coming on. Yep. And uh, we'll see you all next time. Thank you. Yes, sir.